coming to you from Gdansk. And uh, just to put the setting in quite here, just stand up and show you where I am. This is the former Gdansk shipyard. And be there we have the monument to those who were killed here in December 1970. And what is curious enough is today is the 10th of August 2022. The first time I was here was the 30th of August. Uh, that was a Monday and that was in 1982. So it'll be nearly 40 years uh, since I was first here. So anyway, uh, as this is a live broadcast, I would request that, as always, that uh, you keep the language clean. You can actually ask questions, of course, and the questions do not have to be related to uh, the subject. One thing I would ask is, uh, there is a bit of wind here today. As you can see, I'm holding the microphone. If there's any problems with the uh, the sound quality or anything like that, then uh, please uh, please write it down and I will then stop. Now, yesterday I got this question, which was, is it cheaper to live in an RV or a house? And I thought that was uh, sufficiently good a subject to actually do on a video like this. Now, I've lived in both and so and a flat as well for that matter. And uh, so I do feel uh, myself um, able to actually to respond to it um, if anybody give me the choice of a house or a flat I, th I would actually take a flat now uh, the reason for this is I don't really want the responsibility of a garden um, although on the other hand I do rather feel I would like to actually grow things like blueberries in it uh, now if given the choice of an RV or a house well that's a bit more that's a bit more difficult and I certainly um, it, <laughs> would rather live in a motorhome than live in a house um, I, I feel certainly far freer and um, oh thanks that you can hear me loud and clear thank you <laughs> unfortunately I can't see the screen very well and um, I, I noticed one thing today I was doing a review or I started to do a review of a, um, a sort of a mattress uh, um, uh, that can be an emergency mattress or an outdoor mattress and I couldn't I couldn't read what was written on it and to, to, anyway that's that once I've done that review I'll stick it up uh, uh, live online um, so um, so give obviously I live in a motor home I've lived in a motor home now for 11 years um, I have in that, those 11 years though I have been living in house as, as well and flats as well uh, been a couple of girlfriends along route I stayed with my mother and I've been in my own properties as well and uh, right so uh, let's get straight into the questions there because there's how do you deal with post well I'll tell you what just happened to me I've been to the post office today to uh, collect a parcel uh, I knew where I would be um, so it's the same sleeping bag, uh, sleeping uh, mat thing, mattress, and um, so I just gave a friend's address. Uh, she agreed to do it, and uh, unfortunately she wasn't there when when it. Uh, but I, so I had to actually collect the thing. But that's how I do it. I just collect things. Um, having said that, in most places you do have to be registered somewhere. I am registered uh, for official purposes. So um, from that point of view, I'm a reg um, you cannot give up completely. Uh, so how do you get around this? Because in some jurisdictions there may be tax or other uh, things you have to worry about. For example, I mean in Germany, uh, you have, you'd have to, wherever you're s s theoretically staying, you still have to pay for the rubbish collection even though you're not actually there. Um, it could be that you have to pay for the uh, taxation on where you're living even though you're not actually living. Um, the, I mean, there's all sorts of obligations and added to that, obviously, the, there's fiscal uh, and taxation uh, obligations, which you unfortunately living in a motorhome doesn't uh, exclude you from. So uh, you have to have some kind of an address. Now, what I've noted from uh, viewers and things is, for example, we have the situation where they've actually used their kids' addresses and uh, so it, people doing this type of thing do tend to be older anyway. Uh, um, if anybody's lucky enough to be um, young and be able to do it, then well, maybe they could use the parents. But so family is the first uh, choice. Uh, then I suppose friends, um, um, if you own properties, then but I, I do appreciate that if somebody's living in the van, they may not actually own, but uh, um, uh, there's, uh, 
you have to get around it somehow if you go completely off the system which i, I suppose also is possible but um i, I would uh, if, if you ever needed something like medical attention or something of that nature um i think that that uh that might that might be a bit that might be a bit difficult so uh, in whatever you, you can't really go completely off the grid <laughs> or the, uh, uh, if you like you have to be based uh, somewhere and um, actually those those costs I've just mentioned now uh, they could be uh, a part of the cost of living in a motorhome so it doesn't actually ex exclude you from certain uh, taxation that certainly doesn't exclude you from income taxation for example uh, the um, uh, but let's have a look at some of the other costs right well so whatever you eat uh, it's probably going to cost the same if you're at home or you're in a van alternatively it could be that um, and probably is the case that you choose a location to live in uh, but because the location is possibly in the middle of nowhere, you, you want to be out in the sticks somewhere, then, then the food which you buy is going to be far more expensive than just popping down to your local uh, supermarket, which, which would be cheaper. So that, that's, 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 that's one thing. I don't think that's, that would be a major issue for most people. Uh, of course, you could decide, and this would be rather odd, but you might decide to go and um, park your van in Lidl's car park and pay the fine or whatever. Um, then, then you you would have the cheap food uh, as well so so that uh, that wouldn't really be included now um, if you're paying rent or living in a van well uh, that that's not really a fair uh, comparison because you have to I think include the if you pay uh, I, I think we have to take it that um, it's it, obviously it's pro it's cheaper to live in a van than to pay rent but but the quality of the two is not uh, possibly not comparable uh, one thing though that I find really odd about living in a van and the cost of living in the van is the price of gas and when I had a house and uh, I was paying uh, British Gas or wherever it was or one of the other uh, suppliers um, I always seem to end up paying farm and I'm just using it for for cooking um, and uh, maybe a little bit of hot water but uh, I don't really tend to use it that often um, as I, wa I wash myself usually in cold water uh, for reasons which I'll go into in a different video um, then um, I don't understand why I, I in the van I would probably pay in a year what I end up paying in a month um, it's just illogical because for a van what I've got to do is I've got to go to the fuel station I've got to fill it up with LPG and then I drive off so that one uh, I don't understand but that ends up being much uh, much uh, cheap cheaper um, as far as electricity is concerned as well um, I'm taking electricity from the roof I'm generating the electricity but then again I did have to pay for the solar panels which actually do it now the way that uh, prices are going up now um, be once before I calculated it take me five years to get my money back but, uh, it, it, but the way things are present then uh, I think it would have taken much less time than that obviously batteries for a vehicle are very expensive if you, I mean you can get the cheap things the lead acid ones uh, but they, they, they just aren't they don't perform if you're living in the van a long time uh, if you get something the lithium or the best of all lithium ferrous oxide uh, batteries which will uh, can last for ages I am completely off the grid from March to October uh, I do not need to I do charge charge up when there is the possibility for just to be on the safe side but um, I really do not need it now uh, I've been um, off the grid oh um, since June but that's not entirely I did I, I did uh, recharge I charged my batteries up but they were at 13.7 or something like that so it's um, when I was on the campsite um, but okay, 30 points. Today they were about 13.6 or something. And uh, you can see, having said that, it is the middle of the summer, and so you can see see what the weather's like here now. Um, so um, what were what the other costs? Well, obviously, if, the, uh, if you want to do things like uh, getting water, well, sometimes you get water for nothing, and sometimes you have to pay for it. Uh, if it comes through the pipes at home, you've got to pay for it. So. Um, 
I think the cost is somewhat similar uh, if it all ends up roughly at the same level and uh, hello I, sorry I can't see who, who it is but um, I can't see the screen and uh, I, I'm sure this is my I don't either my eyes or it's it's the bright sunlight and um, and so what about other costs well the thing is this uh, people ask how much it costs to live in a van you know I think it's good to go to a campsite from time to time if only to wash your clothes it gave it of course you can take your you uh you agree um you you can take your clothes to a laundrette or something like that yeah and then i mean if you're in the united states you've got laundrettes everywhere um in some countries like i'm in poland right now here laundrettes are uh, unusual to say the least but um um yeah, so that's why i think it's good to go to a campsite you can wash your clothes you can, you know, just about every campsite these days has a, has a washing machine and uh, a room to allow your clothes to dry on so you, and, you can, and you can charge your batteries up of course you're gonna have to end up paying for that and something like that usually you know 20 euros something or something of that nature plus maybe a charge per person 20 25 euros a night something along those lines so that you'd have to actually include that as well um you're gonna say what about fuel well obviously fuel um if you're living in a house you're not driving the house anywhere but if you're living in a, a van then you are driving around so obviously you're going to spend more on diesel but i don't think that's a fair comparison to actually say one to the other but the big difference is in winter how much does it cost then and uh if you can go if you go to a campsite for winter which is something i do suggest to people to do um you i would negotiate certainly you, i mean if you go up to the uh, campsite and it's still open you say well i'm not going to pay you 20 euros a night i'm going to pay you five euros and well maybe they wouldn't accept that but they they possibly would accept something along the lines of eight for example so from that point of view um that i would uh, uh that that's how i see it having said that um eight years night can you get it can you well let's say 10 I mean, 300 240 to 300 euros can you rent somewhere for that price uh, i don't know if you're a snowbird you've got to drive to where you're going but of course the drive down to wherever you're going and and hang out in the sun in florida or, or southern spain is possibly particularly in the current situation going to be cheaper than paying your gas bills over the winter so uh what really gets me uh it's it's the cost of heating the heating a van is very expensive it's far more expensive than heating a house i mean for for um i, I would say this for uh, heating my van uh definitely um the flat i was living in beforehand was um was cheaper much cheaper a 70 square meter flat was much cheaper to to heat than than than, than the what i've got uh, heating my van at the moment. Sorry, so I've got a question here, which uh, oh uh, sorry, I shall try and read it. I'm sorry, I'm doing my best. I I noticed that you're in front of the Solidarity Museum. I love the views from into the shipyard from the top. Thanks for the great history videos. Oh, thank you, thank you. Right. So yeah, what you can do, I'll, I'll actually when I finish this, so I'll give you a quick overlook of where I am. I like I like to. To do, I like to do things uh, of that nature, and um, uh, so so America will never negotiate prices, and it still feel that living. Oh, sorry, still living uh, in a van is the same as as renting an apartment. Well, you, if you don't want to negotiate, I mean, it's up to if people. You then go somewhere else, and um, and it's American. All the driving you're doing, you add that you, you that gas up per month. It comes to. But how much you would pay for one bedroom? Yes, it could well be. Um, yeah, if you if you're living in, the, for example, the north of the United States and you drive to the south, you've got done what three thousand miles, um, so four four and a half thousand kilometres. So, so it's about what four hundred fifty liters of fuel. Yeah, yeah, sure, that's a, that's a lot. And so uh, and um, oh oh oh, sorry. So I'm trying to read the comments. I'm doing my best. The choice in America for living in a van will be about if do you want more adventures or do you want to be more stationary well that's not just in the united states that's everywhere in america the price isn't different okay so 35 degrees there give a like guys oh thank you very much <laughs> and 
Right, so um, I think I've answered the question. Uh, I think, uh, no, sorry, I haven't answered the question. I think I've, I've, got, I, I've avoided uh, answering the question. I've skillfully avoided answering the question while pretending to. I think it's cheaper to live in a van than it is to live in a muck. But it's, it's, it's a lifestyle, it's a lifestyle decision. If you're doing this for the cheapness, then that is not a good reason, probably because when it gets to winter, it will really hit you. I lived in Southern California, and in winter there at night, it wasn't warm. Indeed, I also lived in Sicily, and I could say I could be out in the day in December, dressed as I am right now, but in, at night, I, I, I have four layers of clothing on. So, uh, right, and, um, right, oh, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm sorry, I'm doing my best here to read the comments. Right, um, it comes to winter extreme weathers like Southern, the energy, the energy use costs more than living in an apartment. Yeah, it, it does cost more than, unless you've got good solar. Sim, simple answer, if you can, have both. Well done there, Sol. Sol Dimitru, as I have. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, you know, what I talk about largely, I, I, I know there's some people who um, look at this type of thing as a way of avoiding spending money. Certainly I do realize that people live in vans, particularly I saw many people in, in the US uh, living in the van because of um, the, the, the uh, for, for, because, because it was, they couldn't get a house or something like that, they couldn't have a flat or whatever. Uh, I don't really think that's the sort of, I do appreciate that people have to do it, and I do, I, but it's not, I'm sort of more looking at it as a lifestyle decision. I mean, if it really came to it, you know, I could live in a house if I wanted to. I just don't really want to. And, uh, okay, oh, Sean says, uh, likes my videos, thanks very much. He's aspiring van, life, uh, but I'm a broke student. I've decided to create a business to help fund my journey. Would you consider giving me some advice sometime, Sean? Well, I can do that in a video, but you can ask your questions, Sean, anytime you want on a live video. No problem. Uh, the thing I do appreciate for students, uh, it's much more difficult than it is for, uh, um, for other people, because those of us who are a bit older uh, like, uh, do have a little bit of financial resources. When I came here, this spot I'm in right now the first time, um, I really didn't have the resources to do something like this, to live in a van and to travel around. The thing is, I don't have the, um, the resources not to actually do things, though. So I, I do have to do work when it comes along. And, uh, but, um, and this year hasn't been a very good year <laughs> for it. But that's that's the way that's the way that's the that's the way things are. And but but for a student, I mean, I think it'd be particularly difficult unless you can think of a business you can do uh, offline now. Um, and uh, oh, sorry, online. And I used to, you know, I, I I'm theoretically a translator. I mean, that's what I studied at university to be. So I, that could be done uh, in a van, couldn't it? Really. So if I had a van, I could do it. Uh, that's one thing. Of course, you'd have to have the financial resources to actually uh, to to to, um, to buy the van in the first place. That's where the problem is. Um, yeah, but, the, but with all this off, um, what do you call it? Uh, people working at home, uh, then they've got the the idea of uh, they've learned how to do it. So many people are now working at home uh, because of COVID, and because this is this has become a possibility. So. Um, uh, so I'm going to answer a question here. Okay, right. So, uh, so it's only good if you have the sun. Sometimes the sun will be overcast and could cause problems with energy, energy storing. We're not always perfect on finding the best clear skies and weather, says uh, Van Camper designer. Thanks, thanks, Sean. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. It does. I mean, yeah. The thing is this: if, it, if you want to go and live somewhere like Alaska or northern Norway, well, I'm, I, I bet it's great in the summer, but uh, the summer doesn't last very long, and it's going to be it's going to be pretty tough. So um, it's it's the winter's the big problem. It's you know I'm going to any let's face it, any fool can sort of live <laughs> when the weather's like it is now, but uh, but uh, going into into the winter and that's really. Um, that's really that's really tough really tough and um so you know for me yeah 
I, I really don't fancy another winter in the van. I just, I, like, sort of wake up in the morning and it's, it's quite cold. And, okay, with even a, di a diesel heater, and, I, you know, I do appreciate the fact that, um, uh, okay, it, it, I turn the, the heater off during the night, but uh, uh, it, uh, for, for reasons for, for reasons of cost. Uh, but uh, you know, in the morning, kids wake up. It's, it's a bit in the cold side. Mind you, it does it does heat the thing up quite quickly. I'll do a video on this actually, uh, but um, uh, probably around October, something something along those lines. Anyway, good. Thanks very much for all of you watching. I'm just now I'm going to turn the camera around. And I'm going to show you where I am. Right, so this is the this is the gate to the uh, steelworks. Now uh, I was here uh, during the strike in 1982. Sorry, there's my gimbals in the way. I'll take the gimbal out of the way a little bit, just a little bit. There you go. And uh, uh, earlier there was there was the, the wall uh, was quite a larger, but, but I was here. Was, there was people actually sitting on there. Where it says Stochnia Gdanska. And below it, there was a sign. It was named after Lenin. It said, um, in Polish. Uh, so, so the um, Lenin shipyard. But they've taken, they've taken that, <laughs> taken that one down. This building. This is the museum, uh, which was built afterwards. Uh, this was built in uh, what uh, uh, about ten years ago, something like that. And it's got this rusty. Br uh, <laughs> that's done deliberately. I think. I think. I think it looks quite uh, quite good. Um, but be before there were buildings related to the shipyard were here. Um, now, uh, in uh, on 17 December 1970, the communist uh, authorities put up the price of food, and uh, this is in a planned economy. And um, obviously, if it was a planned economy, they must have planned to put up the food, the cost of the food. Um, anyway, so this is not a political economic uh, channel. But uh, it's pretty ridiculous if uh, if they couldn't plan things properly, then they should have given up. That's my opinion. Anyways, result people came out and strike, and people got shot. Uh, a lot of people were killed, uh, and I think it was 46. The total number of deaths here. Hi, Alan. It's it's depressing here in London. Looks like I'm traveling the looks like you're traveling the other way forward. Thank you. So, anyway, so this was built at, in the Solidarity period. Solidarity, there was the strikes here in 1981, August, uh, uh, August 81, and this led to the agreement, which is actually on that stone down there, and what Solidarity, the, there were points which the, the Communist authorities agreed to, and then they rescinded. But the, in a brief period of uh, liberalization from August 81 to December the 13th, 1982, uh, things like this were built. So this was built, sorry, I got the dates wrong. Oh, not oh, August 81, August 80 to the 30th of December, 1981. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And um, anyway, uh, so this is, and now the shipyard, uh, probably I've not enough time to take you around now, but I have to do a video on, on, on the, what, what it looks like. I think, I think it, it, it is largely closed. There are various small businesses, mainly related to uh, nautical uh, things uh, here. But uh, on the whole, the shipyard itself is large parts are closed. But what's interesting is that you can actually see um, uh, parts of the shipyard which go back to the 19th century even. And um, so uh, from that point of view, it's very, uh, you know, it really is a very historic uh, place. Yeah, I'll take you in, if, I'll take you inside. So um, at the moment, so this is like the 42nd anniversary of the strikes. Uh, Lech Wałęsa is, it was in hospital, I think he came out today. Um, Anyway, might be able to walk through here, and yep, we'll walk through here. So there you go. It says there. There we are. Two professional historian. Here, history was made, and coming through here. So this is like seen as the place uh, where the uh, communist system uh, came down. Although I think that would be an unfair, actually, from a historical point of view. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't say that myself. I certainly dented it a bit, but uh, 
and obviously it's all uh sorry this is the first time i've been here for a year so i see the, the tree so i can't can't take you over there so some some more work so in, on but the gdansk as a place is a very lively town there's all sorts of things going on here and at the moment there's a the market which is you know it's lots of life it's really uh, um it's very vibrant and this is my favorite place yeah price hikes on everything and uh yeah i mean that, that was you know the market which is here which is uh, held every year uh, but looking at you know the street food and uh it's pretty ex um uh, it's pretty you know it's pretty costly i think um so yeah so so tim says that kvarwinter has his official office in gdansk in this building which i'm standing behind the music's fantastic love gdansk there you go in this building i think it's all i think i can't remember what floor to third fourth floor i can't remember it's official it's official one but if you look at his website most of his photographs are from visits he had at home and uh, anyway i still i still keep me i've got i've got his i've got his phone number and um, uh, i keep meaning to sort of ask if i can see him and uh, anyway i think that would make a really good interview so uh what what he can see here on the floor the floor the the ground he's got the old these cobbles which go back to the 19th century and uh, this building here was where the um i think this is the building where the f accords the gdansk accords were actually signed um this was formerly the uh, sort of the um what you call it, the first aid building the uh, I think I think that's what we say in English. <laughs> where the where you're the uh, BPH. What's that in English? Anyway, whatever it is. Uh, uh, and um, so 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 that's where people, if they needed some plasters put on them or something, they 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 came they came here. We can see that some of the cranes though are still here as well. And last week, uh, uh, last weekend, there was a. Um, uh, they had uh, sort of an open day, not, not these cranes, they're, they're for build, building blocks of flat. <laughs> but they had uh, sort of an open day and you could go up, I think it was 20s water. In fact, a friend of mine, she said that oh, we'd go together. Most things are, I didn't make it here. So, um, so I didn't get to see them. <laughs> and if I remember rightly, this building here was the headquarters of so this is where the management hung, uh, so that that building stood so you can see that building is also a building from the uh 19th century the shipyard itself is uh, um built a number of uh, u-boats for example were actually constructed here in both uh, for the first and second world wars and uh it, but but at the time that when this was the free city of Gdansk, this was um, uh, there weren't. Uh, I mean, business wasn't good in the twenties and thirties. Um, there wasn't the international trade dropped considerably. Ships weren't needed, and, and people weren't replacing ships. In fact, there was plenty of second-hand ships on the market. So so it wasn't it wasn't a good time. Anyway, I'll have to do. If I'll stick this on my history channel. A complete. Yeah, walking tour of the shipyard and uh, anyway great look um, I shall try and do more of these I'll stick the thing on me again all right so I shall try and do more of these uh, um, live broadcast now on Sunday I had a bit of a failure with the live broadcast when I um, this was due to YouTube and uh, I couldn't access it from my mobile uh, phone so uh, what I'll do in future is I, I can't give any warning uh, until YouTube gets this sorted out if I do it from a computer I can say look it's 1700 I'll be on online and that's it and, and but but uh, owing to the way that YouTube is I can't really do it but if you've got any suggestions for things to talk about then uh, do write them down ideas like that which I can try and address 
uh, what it's like to, to be in a motorhome. I have lived in a van now since May 2011. So yes, yeah, so that's more than 11 years now. And so, thanks very much for watching and all the best from me in Gdansk, Poland. Bye.